By August of 1934, Karl Mauger was a wealthy man. He'd worked his way up the ladder and had made some pretty sound investments in the oil industry. By the summer of that year, Carl was one of Wyoming's wealthiest oil magnates, and it looked like the rest of a successful and happy life was laid out before him as well. By then, he'd been with Ella Chack for six years, and Ella had stood by him through thick and thin. She'd wanted to get married for many years, but Carl had explained to her that he wanted to have a steady income before they got married so that he could support her and the family that they'd have together. Ella saw the sense in that, and she saw the sense in it again every time she asked Carl if the time for them to get married had come, but it looked like Carl wasn't going to be ready to settle down anytime soon. That was until he and Ella walked into a local dance hall one day, and Carl saw someone who took his breath away. Olga Schultz was a 21-year-old raven-haired beauty, vivacious and athletic, and almost as soon as they'd walked into the hall, Carl asked Olga to dance with him. Ella was left on the sidelines, watching as Carl and Olga held each other close and danced through most of the evening. Heartbroken, Ella then stormed out of the hall, but Carl didn't even seem to notice. He and Olga danced for the rest of the night, and then they eventually left the hall together, and only two weeks later, Carl was a married man. Carl and Olga decided on a rather unusual spot for their honeymoon. Olga was an avid hunter, and had grown up camping and hunting in the nearby mountain range of Tugoti Pass. That summer, she and Carl headed out there for another camping trip to hunt elk and celebrate their marriage. Most of their days were spent walking the countryside, with Olga showing Carl the layout of the land and the good spots for hunting and trapping. But the sixth day of their honeymoon was different from the others. Olga led Carl towards the Great Divide, wearing her high-laced boots, had a small hatchet on her belt and carried a bag of sandwiches. This part wasn't different to the other days that the newlyweds had trekked through the mountain range, but things took a turn when Olga told Carl that she was tired. Carl thought that this was strange, usually it was him having to keep up with Olga, but he volunteered to follow the path the rest of the way up to the ridge to see if he could spot any elk tracks. Olga sat down on a rock and Carl set off, returning only about 20 minutes later when he hadn't found anything. But by then, Olga had vanished. Carl didn't panic at first. Olga was a skilled hunter, and she knew how to survive out in the wild. It was possible that she'd spotted something and gone to check it out, or maybe she'd even just walked a little way further along the ridge, so he called out for her. Carl kept calling, but once he realised that Olga wasn't going to answer, he knew that something was horribly wrong. When he couldn't find her, Carl went racing down the mountain to inform the local authorities that his wife was missing. A search party of over 300 people, bloodhounds and 20 Native American trackers then headed up to the ridge, combing the area and looking for any signs of Olga. The dogs lost the scent only a few paces away from the rock where Olga had been sitting. It was the same story with her tracks, and the only signs that she'd actually been there at all was the empty bag of sandwiches the team found later in the search. The search team were afraid that Olga had wandered away from the path and had become lost. She was only wearing light summer clothes, and worried that she would freeze before they could find her, the search continued long into the night. It continued in the following weeks too, when the fear that something had happened to Olga only continued to grow. Three days after she'd gone missing, local campers reported hearing a woman screaming out in the forest. The campers weren't able to see the woman, so they couldn't say what she looked like, and the search party couldn't find any traces of her either. To this day, no one is able to confirm that the screaming woman had been Olga, but this would only be one of many near misses that the search party encountered. First, they found tracks out in the forest about eight miles from where Olga had gone missing. Thinking that they were onto something, the search party raced on ahead, only to find out that they were tracking another person wearing similar boots to Olga's. 
Then the party followed reports of a woman walking along the Togoti Pass road, but by the time they'd gotten there, the woman was gone, and witnesses couldn't say exactly what she'd look like. After only finding dead end after dead end, the search came to a screeching halt when a snowstorm hit the mountain, making the pass too dangerous to search for a good few days. When the party could finally make it back up the mountain, any potential traces of Olga had been completely wiped out, and any hope of finding her alive had diminished with them. Many looked to Carl for answers, most people not believing that Olga could have completely disappeared in only 20 minutes, and Carl found himself in hot water. He was questioned about his story, but the details about it remained consistent in the two months that the police held him in custody. But why would they hold a man for two months if they didn't suspect him or his story? But it turns out that Carl was suspected of something, not just potentially killing his new wife. Almost unbelievably, a Carl Mager who looked exactly like Carl Mauger was a criminal operating in the area. The police had been on the search for him for a while when he just walked into the station to say that his wife had gone missing in the Togoti Pass. The police almost couldn't believe their luck and they arrested him right away and Carl was kept in custody until the issue of his identity could be sorted out. When they realised that Carl Mauger wasn't the Carl Mager they'd been looking for and he was cleared of any wrongdoings in the disappearance of his wife, Carl was released, but that didn't explain what happened to Olga at all. The authorities then looked at the facts of her case again and they came to a rather surprising conclusion. There was still the possibility that she'd been attacked by a bear or had even fallen into a ravine and been too injured to call for help, but that wasn't what the authorities believed happened to her. Olga knew the area very well. She'd been hunting there since she was a child, but what she didn't know very well was her new husband. The investigators believed that Olga probably hadn't liked married life as much as she'd thought, and her plan that day had been to leave it all behind. Chances were that she'd only been pretending to be tired, and when Carl had gone on ahead, she'd use that as an opportunity to slip away. From there, she'd hike down the road where she'd hitchhiked to wherever it was she wanted to start her new life, and that was that. This was a theory greatly supported by Olga's sister, Edith Thompson. Edith said that there'd been troubles in Carl and Olga's marriage almost from the moment they'd said, I do. Very soon after, maybe even on the same day of their wedding, Carl received a letter from Ella warning him that she was going to kill herself for the way that things had panned out. It is not certain how Carl reacted to the letter, but Edith said that Olga was heartbroken. She'd blamed herself and worried that by marrying Carl she'd made a mistake that could potentially cost someone their life. Olga then asked Edith to come out on the honeymoon with them so that she could have the opportunity to think of something to make it all right again, but then things hit a snag. Not really understanding what was going on at the time, Edith later recalled saying to her sister as they were packing for her trip, Why, Ollie? Three persons never go on a honeymoon. So, still not quite in the know about what was going on under the surface, Edith chose not to go with her sister, but she believed that Olga tried to make things right in her own way. She thought that Olga did run away to start a new life, but there's also the possibility that something else entirely happened to her up on that mountain. What if Ella had changed her mind about taking her own life, and had then decided to kill the person who'd taken Carl away from her instead? What if Carl regretted tossing Ella aside for a new woman and had changed his mind about the person he wanted to be married to? Another witness reportedly close to both Carl and Ella said that the both of them had continued their relationship even when Carl had gotten married to Olga. Carl had always denied this and it's possible that seeing as only weeks had gone by since Carl had dumped Ella and then married Olga, emotions still could have been too raw for there to be any opportunities of an affair. But was there any evidence to support the theory that either Ella or Carl had had something to do with Olga's disappearance? The Native American trackers who'd searched the area believed so. 
Following Carl's statement, they travelled to the ridge from where he said that Olga had sat down on the rock and he had carried on. They noticed that as they travelled the path Carl claimed to have taken, Olga's rock was always in their line of sight. If this was true, would it have even been possible for her to disappear without him noticing? With nothing else to go off of, the investigation went cold and seven years later, it didn't look like it was going to be solved anytime soon either. Carl hadn't remarried in all that time and he hadn't had Olga declared as dead either, but by then he was ready to move on with his life. He was able to legally separate from Olga and he married another woman in the hopes of living a happy and long life with them instead, Ella Chak. So Ella finally got the man she had wanted and Olga's sister Edith later said that this was exactly what Olga would have wanted. The rest of Olga's family believed that something happened to her up on that mountain. More than likely an accident, but the possibility of foul play was not out of the question, especially when her brothers organised a search party of their own. They'd gone up the mountain themselves, approximately a year after she'd gone missing, camping in the spots they knew that she'd known well, and looked for any signs of someone living out in the wild by themselves, but they came back empty-handed. Before his death, Olga's father believed that she was dead, but Edith held on to hope that Olga was enjoying a new life somewhere. She said, I continue to haunt the mailbox, expecting to hear from her someday. But she, unfortunately, never did. <laughs>